Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. We were doing nucleophilic substitution and I explained to you that there are two different mechanisms that nucleophilic substitution can follow when the nucleophile is being substituted for the halogen in a halo alkane. The two different mechanisms were known as the SN1 mechanism and the SN2 mechanism. The SN1 mechanism is one which takes place in two different steps. And in SN1, the reason we call it one is because at one time only one reactant is, is uh, acting or reacting. And that is why uh, the reaction takes place in two steps. In one step, the nucleophile, the formation of carbocation takes place. And in the next step, the nucleophile goes and attaches itself to the carbocation. And in the SN2 mechanism, on the other hand, the uh, leaving group, that is the halogen, remains attached to the haloalkane and the nucleophile comes and attacks the positive carbon. And there is an intermediate stage in which both the leaving group and the nucleophile are attached to the, uh, to the carbon and to the haloalkane. Therefore, the sequence of the, the reactivity of different kinds of species would depend on two factors in both SN1 and SN2. And these two factors are first is the, uh, the quality of the leaving group. And it has been found that in both SN1 and SN2, the uh, iodine, that is the iodide, since iodine is a larger atom, it forms a longer bond length and therefore breaking the uh, carbon iodine bond is easier. Therefore, whether it is SN1 or SN2, the iodide would always be show more reactivity if the alkyl group is the same for both SN1 and SN2. And the other factor is one that is different for SN1 and SN2. That factor is known as the steric hindrance. I have already explained this to you. If you do not understand what I'm telling you, I would encourage you to watch the previous couple of videos in which I explained this very well to you. Yet, I'll just summarize it a little. According to SN1 mechanism, at one time only one uh, species is participating. Therefore, steric hindrance is not a factor. I gave you that example of standing in the bus door where people are standing and the bus is almost moving and they are, the bus is really crowded and people are standing at the door and one person has to jump in. That is the case that happens in SN2 mechanism, that the more crowded the bus is, the more difficult it is for that person to jump in. So when you already have the halogen attached and there are species attached to the carbon other than the halogen and the nucleophile is also going to jump into the bus and form one uh, intermediate uh, step or the, uh, the transitionary state, for that to be formed, the the groups that are added in other than the halogen the other groups whichever are at whichever are joined to the carbon if they are bulky it will be more difficult for the atom for the nucleophile to jump up on the bus therefore the greater the bulkier the groups the more is the steric hindrance and the more difficult it is for sn2 mechanism so based on steric hindrance what is the sequence the, the sequence of um, the reactivity of primary, secondary and tertiary haloalkanes would depend on the steric hindrance for both the uh, groups and they would be opposite, their sequence would be opposite because in SN2 mechanism, the steric hindrance is an important factor. But in SN1, there is no steric hindrance because the reaction is taking place in two different steps. But the other factor here that plays importance in SN1 is the formation of a stable carbocation. And usually it has been seen that whatever is the sequence for SN2, the sequence for SN1 is the opposite of it. So whenever you get such questions, you have to, you have to estimate or rather you have to find out the uh, sequence for one of those and for the other, it would automatically be the opposite. So this is one question that I saved on purpose so that I do this one now and this would then make the uh, steric hindrance part or it would really make it very clear to you uh, what we have, uh, what I have been trying to explain. This is example 10.7. It is the solved example of your textbook and it has two parts. You have to predict the order of reactivity of the following reactions for both SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. 
the first part is there are four isomeric bromobutanes. What are the four isomeric bromobutanes? Uh, butanes? I've already made the structures. Bromobutane first would be a straight chain that is CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2Br. The second would be CH3 where we take bromine, we shift the bromine to the second carbon so it will be CH3, CH2, CHBr, CH3. In the third what we can do instead of turning making bromine a branch let us make a methyl group a branch so you get CH3, CH, one CH3 here and CH2Br and the fourth isomer that you would be getting would be CH3, C, CH3 and one CH3 is a branch here and bromine is also present as a branch here. So there are two branches. So these are the maximum number of uh, isomeric bromobutanes that you can prepare. Now the thing is, let us classify them as primary, secondary and tertiary. And from what we have understood, according to SN2 mechanism, According to SN2 mechanism, the steric hindrance is an important factor. Steric hindrance, I said there are two factors. First is the leaving group, the quality of the leaving group. That sequence remains the same for SN1 and SN2. But for SN2 and SN1, the other factors are steric hindrance is more important in hindrance is more important for SN2 and for SN1 it is the stability of the carbocation. So on the basis of this, steric hindrance will be maximum in a tertiary haloLK. So the more the steric hindrance, less is the uh, chance of SN2 mechanism. So for, for SN2 mechanism, primary uh, haloalkane would be most reactive then would be secondary and then would be tertiary and for SN1 mechanism in which one step takes place at one time the tertiary carbocation usually is more stable so in this case tertiary would be most reactive then secondary and then primary so keeping this sequence in mind let us now judge these molecules we find that for SN1 mechanism, for let us first write down the uh, sequence for one of these. This is these two are primary. I've classified these as primary, secondary, and tertiary also. These two are primary. This is secondary and this is tertiary. So we understand the sequence for SN2 would be primary would be the highest, would be the most reactive, and tertiary would be the least reactive. But the problem here is that you have two different primaries. Out of these two different primary uh, hydrocarbons or halo alkanes, which one would be more reactive towards, which one would have more steric hindrance? Which one do you think would have more steric hindrance? Or if we talk in terms of the formation of carbocation, which one do you think will form a more stable carbocation? When we say primary, uh, haloalkane, it means the halogen is attached to a carbon which is attached to only one other carbon. So both of these are primary. Bromine is attached to a carbon which is attached to only one other carbon. The only difference is that this structure is branched and this is a straight structure. This branched structure would form a carbocation which would have a tendency. This would be, uh, if you've not studied about inductive effect, you would study it later. This would have a, a tendency to push the electrons towards bromine because this is more condensed. There are, the electrons are more condensed in this structure. So they would have a tendency to push the electrons towards, it would be easier for them to push electrons towards bromine. Therefore, the carbocation that this would form would be more stable, right? This carbocation, the carbocation would be more stable, which means that if we said that tertiary is the most stable carbocation on the basis of carbocation, if we are following the SN1 mechanism, the tertiary for SN1 the tertiary carbocation would be the most stable. So this would be, it would show maximum reactivity towards SN1. Then comes the secondary, which is this one, two. Let us call this compound one. Let us call this compound two. Let us call this compound three. And let us call this compound four. So tertiary would be, for SN1, tertiary would be compound four, would be greater than two, which is two. 
would be greater than 3, that is the primary one, which would be greater than 1. So 1 would be the least reactive towards SN1 mechanism. But towards SN2, the steric hindrance of the tertiary would be the highest, then would be the secondary. And out of the two primaries, since this one is a branched form, this would have more steric hindrance. So whatever you may say, there may be only two people standing in the doorway of the bus. But if they are standing very close and very close to the bus, uh, to the door and they are peeping out, then the person who is trying to jump up into the bus, it is still going to be difficult for him. So the sequence that you have in SN1, for SN2, it would be the opposite sequence. So for SN2, we would say the sequence would be 1, compound 1 would be the greatest, then 3, then 2, and the least would be 1. Right? So this was the first part of the question. Let us now do the second part. These are four compounds that are given to us. And we have to look at them and then again uh, arrange them according to their, uh, to the, uh, according to their reactivity towards SN1 or SN2 or their preference towards SN1 or SN2 mechanism. Again, let us number these compounds. Let this be 1, let this be 2, let this be 3, and let this be 4. What do we notice here? Out of these, this one is a primary bromide. There are two secondary bromides, right? And there is one tertiary. So according to sequence, for SN2, it should be 1 degree, should be greater than 2 degree, should be greater than 3 degree. And for SN1, 3 degree should be the most reactive and 1 degree should be the least reactive. Now, in this case, we find that there are two secondary uh, compounds. Two of them are secondary. This is tertiary, this is primary. For primary, secondary, tertiary, we understand the sequence. But out of the two secondary ones, which one would have more steric hindrance? In order to understand this, let us first see what is attached. Here to bromine, this is primary, but there's a benzene group attached, okay, a phenyl group. Here you have two phenyl groups attached to the carbon, right? Here you have one phenyl group and one methyl group. Now, the phenyl group is like a, uh, like a football and the methyl group is like a tennis ball. So, the football is bigger, which would have more steric hindrance. Obviously, the bigger ball, the fatter person standing in the door would have more steric hindrance. So that would hinder the incoming nucleophile even more. So out of these two, if you see, and here if you see, there are all the three groups are bulky. So steric hindrance will be the highest in tertiary, that we understand, least in the primary one. But out of these two, one of these has a smaller group and one of these has a bigger group. This phenyl is the same, but if you compare these two, the phenyl group is bigger than the methyl group. So the steric hindrance of the phenyl group would be more. If steric hindrance would be more, it means greater the steric hindrance, the lesser is the chance of it to follow the SN2 mechanism. Right? Greater the steric hindrance. So for SN2 mechanism, we'll say, SN2 mechanism, you, the most reactive for SN2 would be the primary, that is uh, compound 1 would be the most reactive, then would be the secondary, out of the secondary. Now which one has more steric hindrance? This has more steric hindrance, so this would be more reactive. So we would say uh, compound 3 would be more reactive, then compound 2 and then compound 4, right? And for SN1, the sequence would be opposite. 4 would be most reactive, and then 2, then 3, and then 1. So this is how you understand when you look at the compounds that are given to you. How would you determine what would be the sequence or what would the, their preference be towards SN1 or SN2 mechanism? And if whatever is their preference, what would be their sequence of that preference in the case of both SN1 and SN2 mechanisms to follow those? So I hope with this you understand what uh, both 
the mechanisms very well and with this I would wrap up this video if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now